In this video, we're going to draw Zangief from Street Fighter 2. This is going to be less about fan art and more about learning to draw. Zangief is actually more or less a standard human, but he is huge. And that really is the challenge today with his character. We have to figure out how to make a character look as big as possible using traditional structural drawing techniques. The way we're going to do this is to look at some simple reference and combine it with a lot of the structural drawing drawing techniques that you might find in a book such as Andrew Loomis's Figure Drawing for All It's Worth or Drawing the Head and Hands. Now, I am a huge Street Fighter fan. I've been playing these games since I was very small, going through the arcades, popping in the coin, but I'm not really much of a fan artist. I don't do a lot of fan art, and I've never drawn Zangief before in my life. I am, however, a professional comic book artist, and I do this all day, every day, designing characters, redrawing characters again and again. So this is more of an opportunity to share with you some techniques for drawing, and we can learn together how to break down this character, and I'll show you a lot of the tools and techniques that I use every day so that you can use them when you are either breaking breaking down your own characters that you have designed or when you're doing your own fan art. Anyway, this should be fun. Let's jump in, get started. All right, welcome to The Drawing Codex. My name's Tim McBurney. I've been a professional working artist for over 20 years and on this channel we're all about drawing cool stuff from our imagination, embracing the challenge of drawing and mastering the craft of line and color illustration. Now, just quickly, if you'd like to learn more about line and color illustration, how I do the work that I do day in, day out, you can check out my free quick start guide. It's aimed to get you up and running, developing your own simple, reliable line and color process in Photoshop. You'll get access to all of the PSDs, brushes, etc., that I use day to day that go into that quick start guide. It's free, the link will be in the description. Go check it out. All right, here we are at the drawing table. Now, tools for today are some Blackwing matte pencils. I have a kneadable eraser. If I need to erase, I will use the eraser on the pencil. Got some anatomical uh, skeleton and ecorche models. These are from anatomytools.com. And again, I think they're some of the sort of better ones. We're going to be able to use them, but obviously Zangief's musculature is next level so a big part of this demo is mostly just going to be extrapolating upon this pushing it to you know its furthest extreme and we're really just going to focus on primary form just like the big shape see if we can get that happening because once you get that happening most of the rest takes care of itself now the paper is some strathmore drawing smooth surface uh, drawing paper. It's the 400 series. It's 130 GSM or, um, you know, again, sort of 80 pounds. It's a nice kind of uh, smooth surface drawing paper that will handle a fair bit of roughing up, redrawing, erasing, etc. The books that I have are my normal sort of Capcom design works and this Street Fighter Memorial Archive Beyond the World book. This has most of the, you know, sort of better reference for all the different versions of Street Fighter. I bought this original Capcom Design Works um, ages ago. It actually comes with a cover, um, right? This black and white is just the sort of soft cover um, sort of look. But uh, yeah, you know, this is one of my favorite art books just because it has, it's just packed so uh, full of really, really cool. Um, it's kind of, you know, all the most interesting sort of dynamic, uh, you know, Street Fighter, Capcom art throughout the years. Um, obviously, it doesn't have a lot of the newer stuff because it's, you know, it's a, a fairly sort of old edition. I actually bought this off uh, Amazon Japan way, way, way back in the day when, again, you know, sort of finding, um, you know, art books is very tricky. And, and I found that you could actually just go on Amazon Japan with your Amazon US account. Back then, there was no Amazon Australia. And all you had to do was kind of just, yeah, you could log in and you, everything's in Japanese, but you just kind of like find things and click them. And yeah, I bought so much stuff uh, back then. And uh, again, didn't really have any idea about whether or not um, what I was getting was, you know, even, you know, what I thought it was, uh, just sort of clicking on stuff. But yeah, this is one of the gems where it all sort of worked out um, nicely. And uh, yeah, such a, such a cool art book. But uh, anyway, we should uh, go draw Zangief, right? Or maybe we could just keep keep looking at cool cool art. I especially like a lot of this Mega Man stuff. I, I feel like it's so 
um, so nicely stylized. And I always really liked the, again, the mix of sort of sketchiness um, and, uh, you know, sort of production art. Again, just such a cool mix of, um, again, ideas, energy, sketchiness. Uh, a lot of that Capcom art was, yeah, just always so exciting. And again, really cool to see the old art, which is kind of a little bit hokey, a little bit goofy, but, you know, it still has a lot of those core ideas that, uh, again, you know, inspired a lot of those arcade games, etc. Anyway, I digress. Let's, uh, let's draw Zangief, hey. You can actually chart a lot of the exaggeration in the design uh, that happened throughout the different versions of Street Fighter. Here we got the sort of Street Fighter, quote unquote, Street Fighter 1. And again, you know, everyone's kind of more or less sort of standard proportion. Once we get to Street Fighter 2, you really see that they were playing with the idea of these big shapes, right? Getting the, the different shape dynamics there, making sure all of this stuff looked, um, you know, sort of cool, uh, very sort of dynamic character designs. Still pretty sort of standard proportions and stuff though. Um, but uh, again, you know, Zangief was always kind of huge. But uh, once you sort of get, you know, a bit bigger, here we got sort of Street Fighter 2, the new challenges art. And uh, you kind of see even the Ken and Ryu character, which is the standard character, is really, really big. So that's one of the things I want to do today is, again, talk about, okay, here's what the standard proportions might be. Here's what you would need to do just to kind of get it to look like the standard Ken and Ryu model. And then, uh, again, what do we do to kind of get it looking this big? How, what are the tricks? How much do we need to push the proportion? So if we start with standard human proportions, right, what, we, we, what we're going to be dealing with is... Again, something very similar to our little skeleton body there. We've got a very simple mannequin. And what I'm doing here is just hashing out what those proportions would be. So we've got very simple proportional mannequin. Now, even if I kind of, you know, put some, you know, muscular markers on here, we sort of fill this with the traditional, right, sort of drumstick style iconography. Right, we've got our bone plus a bit of muscle. Even if I kind of chunk this up, right, what we'll probably find is, you know, look, it, it's still not going to get us there, right? It's probably not even going to get us to here. Look how big these arms are compared to, you know, everyone's head, right? It's like bicep is at least twice as big as anyone's head. Except if you're dealing with, again, the much sort of skinnier characters, in which case the bicep is as big as the head. Um, so let's look at this, right? If we think of this as our normal, and then we sort of look at what the sort of Street Fighter normal, right, would be. Um, what we're going to do is try and sort of exaggerate those proportions. We keep the proportions more or less the same. We're just going to widen the frame. We're going to widen all of the major right, muscles and, and sort of keep the head relatively small compared to everything else. All right, so we're gonna, still going to think about right, what this rib cage is going to be. All right. And let's make these. Let's draw it down. Boom. Add a little bit of sort of heroic proportion. Now, Loomis talks about this in his books, um, you know, figure drawing for all it's worth. And I've heard um, also, you know, a lot of great um, figure drawing sort of teachers talking about this. Again, you know, you're typically going to get a, a more aesthetically pleasing look if you elongate the legs. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, when we're sort of dealing with our typical sort of proportions, our, our sort of human proportions, uh, the, the heroic figure is, uh, is going to be a lot bigger, but it's not just a matter of sort of how we do it, right? We're, we're wanting to sort of exaggerate um, particular parts of that. So we're, I'm going to sort of work on exaggerating the, the V-shaped taper, right? That we typically, um, you know, sort of associate with good male aesthetically pleasing proportions. And I'm also going to elongate the legs a little bit. Now, I'm not going to do that, you know, to a, to a, some crazy degree, but I'm certainly going to, you know, again, make sure that the legs are longer rather than shorter than they should be. And we're going to sort of push this shape here. 
and this is what's going to give us that feeling of sort of mass, right? Boom. So I've still got more, most of the proportional markers are there, right? The, the hands are sort of ending about one hand length, right? Above the knee. I've still got the elbow hitting about where the navel would be, the belly button would be, slash the bottom of the rib cage is going to be. All of those things are the same. We are just getting wider. And we're getting a little bit right a little bit longer and again you know if we add those masses on here we can see that yeah you know if I start to right add those masses there I'm gonna get some proportions that are gonna start to feel a little bit more heroic this would be similar to your sort of superhero proportions etc right so that's kind of what what we're trying to do we're trying to sort of increase the mass here right we've got our Ryu crazy hair and again I'm exaggerating a little bit right it's a little bit more sort of fashion model but uh, you know it we, we're gonna need this type of exaggeration if we want to draw and get things looking a little bit more exaggerated. And again, doing these, you know, Street Fighter breakdowns has helped me again understand again where my style kind of naturally fits. Right? Is this, uh, you know, if you want that sort of exaggeration, probably need to go a little bit, a little bit further than I'm normally comfortable with. And uh, yeah, you know, that's right, if we sort of think about our sort of Ryu Ken. look that's sort of what we're dealing with right so again you know i'm just being simple here we're just really dealing with proportion primary form like i've done with a lot of the other sort of breakdowns uh you know if i want to sort of take this and try to draw a, a zangief sort of character that is uh, you know a little bit more posed i'll do that in a separate video because it'll normally take one hour to one and a half hours to really sort of think through a pose and do that and, and we don't have time to do this as well all right, so let's uh, let's sharpen this pencil. What we'll do next is again look at sort of how far we need to push things, and um, again what what I would tend to find is you got to push it pretty far. So we'll start with just the general proportions that we we've got here, right? Let's think about okay, we've got our torso, and again I always just mass this in as a sphere, but as you can see from the uh, skeletal model. It's much more of an ovoid shape. Right. Now, one of the things, there's a couple of things we sort of notice about Zengiev's general musculature. One is he has really wide, sort of chunky, oh, chunky hips. Right. So he, he doesn't have quite so much of that V shaped taper, right? He has a, a square taper, right? And with sort of. Um, massive arms and legs so we're dealing a little bit more with something like this right in terms of the shoulders we're going to need to push them way out and you know again it can be sort of good to maybe push these shoulders down a little bit as well right so thinking about where that sort of happens and what I'm going to also do is think about well his arms are going to sort of come out a little bit right because that's often what happens to those bodybuilders is that they actually can't put their arms by their sides any longer right we're going to have some of these sort of bowling ball for shoulders proportional looks and again I'm using this as a simple way to, to block in the form but you it, it is actually really useful to do it this way because it at least gives me a sense of the width that I have to to match if I start constructing anatomy or doing anything else at this point can be very tricky because you get locked into sort of oh which muscle goes where what's what's going on right so let's look at the basic proportion that we're going to have to hit again what i might do think about let's make these 
little bit longer. Right, let's put these legs a little bit further apart. So think about where the right the S curve of the spine coming up here. I'm drawing it behind. We have a skull up here. We have a rough neck form, and then we're also going to have these kind of giant traps sort of coming to give us this sort of shape here, right? Uh, again. So it's all the way in the corner for me, so a little bit harder to see. So this is kind of the, you know, the general sort of proportion that we're, right, that we're sort of looking at. Again, hands here. And the hands are almost as big as everything else, right? It's like these hands are almost as big as the the forearms. So that's kind of what we're what we're sort of dealing with. And again, the the wrists also are pretty big. So again, if we just sort of connect these things together, we'll start to get a feel for like, oh, how how big is this character? How big does this character need to be? Right? Massive neck, right? It's like the head is kind of just resting in there. Um, and the other thing is, again, we've got this massive sort of chest, right? So I'm really thinking about trying to construct, right? If we look at this from the side, right? Boom, right? Got our sort of head here, right? Got our chest, right? Pelvic area, right? We're going to have these massive, massive sort of muscles, right? Massive shoulders here, massive neck. Um, and what I'm really trying to make sure, again, those pectoral muscles are going crazy, right? They really need to be uh, doing some sort of Rob Liefeld-esque um, mass, depth, dimension. Um, and uh, again, you know, I, I think what you'll find is that unless you really push that, it's going to be hard to get where we need to go. Um so the other thing, again, we'll sort of notice again with a lot of these characters, it, we sort of have this, right, this big sort of shape here that we can think about. Right, we've got the traps, the lats. If you look at our, our anatomical echo shade, this is kind of what we're dealing with. Right, this mass here. Right, this mass here. And it, it's sort of good to think about these larger kind of forms that can kind of really help us except because he's wider right it's it's like less um sort of right it's less like this and more right just like right it's wider and got Right, sort of pelvic area there. Got these sort of massive, massive arms. Very cartoony. And again, we've got these. Get the knees in there. And again, these kind of chunky legs. And yeah, we really want those, right, those calves to be as big as that. So this is where, again, you know, it, it, if I start drawing muscles, I, I'm always going to be a little bit, right, a little bit restrained because I'm like, oh, this is where the muscle goes. Whereas if I put in a giant sort of sphere and I'm just like, yeah, this is how big this needs to be, then immediately, right, you get a feel for how big you have to go. So it's so important to use these sort of massing techniques, right? They really sort of help to get a feeling of how big things need to be. Now, again, you know, it's, this is not necessarily the most accurate, um, detailed, uh, muscular sort of version. We're still dealing with primary form. Right, if we think about the, the normal sort of levels of form, we have right, primary, secondary, and 
tertiary form. And what we're dealing with here is, is mostly primary. And that just means the big shapes. So one of the things we, we kind of notice is that, again, these characters often look a bit silly because they're just so big, similar to how those sort of bodybuilders look, right, when they're just kind of walking around. Um, you know, it's often that we sort of put them in these sort of interesting poses to kind of help make them look interesting. Right, and he's going to have, again, his chest is going to be bigger than that. And he's got this. crazy, weird chest here. So again, that's kind of what we're looking for. And we could probably even lose some of that V-shaped taper, right? Just make him completely chunky. So again, hopefully we can see there, right, how far we probably have to push it. In order to get him to kind of look right. So let's have a go at that, right? Let's draw it a little bit bigger. Uh, might think about again, compressing the pose just a little bit. And uh, yeah, you know, just uh, try and sort of work out how we do this, but to add a little bit more of that secondary form in there. So before we do that though, one of the things we can think about is using some of these basic mannequin ideas to consider what a pose might be. So let's look at, you know, a couple of sort of interesting poses that we might sort of think about. We could sort of just have a, a slight right, like a slight sort of bend. Right, where maybe he's doing again like a bit of that sort of flex, right? And we can we can put in these gigantic sort of forms, right? So again, I'm being super rough, but you know, this is gonna this is gonna help me and this will maybe give us an idea for how how some of this works. Right, so if we if we look at some of these basic proportions, right? If we sort of think about a series of shapes like this, right? So what I'm doing here is just thinking about oh look, you know, if we get get all of these shapes in there like what overlaps what right is this gonna is this gonna look interesting we can have some good overlaps etc or is it gonna look messy right some other things we could do is uh, again you know maybe put a little bit more of a pose on here again do these smaller you don't have to All right, we don't have to do them that detailed, All right? Maybe we could have him kind of standing on something, right? Doing, All right? Showing, like showing off this bicep. And again, what I'm going to try and do is put in, right? Put in these giant sort of forms. See whether that, you know, what the what the shape language is gonna be. Right, if we did something like this, boom. Well, So 
again, just thinking about the pose, little, little thumbnails will, will kind of help a lot, right? And again, we could do that from the back, you could do it from the front, right? Like whatever you want. Again, mostly I'm just trying to uh, play around, have fun and, 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 and show how, again, we use this kind of mannequin uh, massing in thing to, to, you know, sort of really focus there. So, yeah, I mean, I think it might be good also, right? If we kind of, let me put that, we could, we could do something like this. Just thinking about having some rotational value on the, right, on the pose there. Right, so he's sort of, again, twisted a little bit. So just thinking, right, again, what's this? I don't know, a box of some variety. Again, because he's often sort of posing, right? Like that's kind of the, the, the point, although this is not necessarily the, the, the sort of classic Zangief pose. Um, but again, might be worth sort of playing with. Again, he's normally doing this kind of like, uh, sort of flexing, flexing kind of look. But um, anyway, let's give this a go. Um, might be also good to, you know, talk about some of these ideas. And we've sort of done a basic version there. All right, so we'll just do it a little bit bigger. We're gonna, I'm gonna try and set the proportion bars kind of here, all right? And give us plenty of, right, plenty of room to play. Right, so we're gonna have, again, that sort of halfway out. You can see I'm using sort of a loose grip, small pencil, can be really helpful for this. And again, just kind of thinking my way through. In this case, I think, yeah, he's got sort of open chest. So, yeah, draw this torso here. And he'll get heaps bigger, so this is where, again, we've got to think about where this stick figure is, right? S curve here, right, skull here, maybe looking up at his, right, up at his arm. Again, with foreshortening, always good to try and sort of mass some of those things in there with a little bit more accuracy. Again, going to have chest here. Bump, bump, bump. Again, remember we need this kind of shape, right? This kind of really helps to visualize. Again, not structural. It's not a structural shape. It's a shape shape but this is going to help get what we want happening there so again mixing up a couple of different sort of drawing techniques here but when when we're trying to think about the pose again i've sort of done a little bit of it here right I, i'm sort of getting a feel for how that might work Again, let's try and make sure this these pectorals are absurd, right? Lats also going to be absurd. Hips here. So what do we got? Again, a lot of these things are sort of. What do we do first? What what's what's the goal? Well, one of the things that I I think is sort of important is that again the way the hand connects to the to the leg is sort of important. So we've got our stick figure there. Right, this is going to come down here, and then this hand is, is going to sort of be grabbing a leg. Now, if we sort of think about where we want that connection point to be, that is actually the most important thing. So if I sort of set that first, I'm like, well, this arm kind of looks, that's like a nice angle, right? Once we sort of bulk this up, right, that's going to be, yeah, that's going to be sort of interesting. Right, I'm like, yeah, I, I feel like there'll be room there. Um, so that's the connection point. That's the important thing. Next, we've sort of got to say, well, okay, what what is going to support that? Right, we've got a leg here. 
right? And we're going to have, you know, right, so this leg is roughly the same, right, from here, here to here. It's roughly the same as there to there. So we're going to have this right here. And then, right, we just need to sort of have that same distance there. Boom. And then we're going to go down. So I'm going a bit below where I sort of want it, but that's okay because um, I've got space. So that's why I made it a little bit smaller to begin with because we're going to, again, we're sort of going to expand out of, out of here. Now, one of the things, again, we have to be sort of super careful is that, you know, again, at the moment I'm like, yeah, we, we're not necessarily 100% looking like Zangief. I think we need to kind of really work on that. Um, but what I'm going to do is just put in, right, most of the major kind of markers. And I think there's a couple of things here. One is like, look, in Street Fighter Land, if you want to sort of, you know, get the characters looking from a fan art perspective, like, you know, sort of in the right track, you've got to get the hands a little bit bigger, right? Because the hands are just kind of pretty big on that guy. Also think about, again, the idea that he has these kind of huge, huge sort of hips, right? Right, that's where that hair is going to be. And what have we got here? We've got these hips here. Now, again, they might be sort of tilting a little bit. We can play around with that. Right hips are tilting that way, right? It's like that's kind of going that way a bit. We don't want to have that too much, but this will right affect the look of where oh and that's but that's gonna be we're gonna be looking up at that. Right, center, bump, 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 bump. And let's mass in. Right, let's say, well, what happens when we Right, when we add the, the balloons, right? Again, I feel like... Have to look at our anatomy reference here. But I feel like this is where we're going to get it looking a little bit more. Like Zangief. Right, we bulk everything out. Right, he's got that sort of wrestler. Wrestler motif. Bump, chunky. Bump, bump. Um, so again, building up to it. Here we've got, and again, making sure, I feel like. So I feel like, again, just need to slow down, double check proportions. Not 100% convinced on this, as I said, right? I feel like the, right, either this needs to start a little bit before. Yeah. And, yeah, so I'm also going to, you know, think about, okay, where does this go, right? This is sort of flat on the ground, more or less, right? This, boom, boom, right, epic, epic legs. Right, got our quads, quads. Just thinking, how big does this stuff need to be? Where is it? Right, bump, 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 bump. Bon. 
is this big enough? Right, this is sort of coming at us. that big enough? How big do we need to be? Boom. Boom. Again, I feel like this needs to be right, even. <laughs> even. Even bigger. Um, and yeah, we like, you know, the, the the bigger we make the bigger we make this stuff right the less big we need to make this but yeah let's just make sure these legs aren't gonna appear too big um, but this is one of those tricky things right where again like uh, I've done these drawings in the past and um, you know I, I end up sort of not drawing I we end up drawing the legs a little bit sort of wrong, but yeah, we, we do want him to kind of feel really chunky. So it's just, it's often just so subtle, the things that will make a difference and you just get, you know, more and more used to it. So what if we take off a tiny bit? Yeah, I mean, I feel like just getting that leg a little bit, right, a little bit smaller is gonna make a difference. Boom. Right, so he's still big. I mean, I still feel like he could be wider, right? Like chunkier there. And this, right, this arm is kind of coming at us. But still, I feel like <laughs> could be bigger. It's always like, no, 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 bigger, bigger. Boom, boom. So he's got one of these things going here, one of them going there. All right, so again, we can kind of see these things at work at any rate. All right, got our shoe here. Again, just focusing on primary form of, uh, you know, the shoes and, and these things. Let's not go crazy. Again, if I want to do a, um, you know, sort of posed version of the character, we can do that. Right. In a separate video. The most important thing is all of this sort of proportion, right? And again, that's where we probably want to play around with that sort of muscle uh, pose, right? With the right again, having trouble. I'm just sort of sketching up here, but yeah, we really want this right hand to go here, right? So it's sort of really. Right, sort of clenching down. So good to get some, uh, again, sort of reference for, right, how that is going to go exactly. But if we just sort of get those shapes working. And it's tricky because the right we're looking up, so it's it's quite quite a tricky sort of angle to really sort of dial those hands in because again we're sort of looking up at them. But but one of the things you you notice with right when we're doing this is that uh, again the the small finger is going to sort of really tuck in there. So it's one of those things where I'd probably say let's get some reference for that one. Um, let's see if we can sort of get that working with some actual sort of proof. Here, that's a little bit simpler. That's kind of a little bit more in my repertoire of hand poses, things we can kind of just 
knock in there that one again it's like it's a it's a weird mix um and and a big reason for that is again the, the tweak on it is is important to really show the tension right because it is the way you kind of tweak on it that gives it that sense of motion so again i'm just roughing it in probably uh, not not the best sort of hand drawing um, which i do apologize for all right so again here all right still got this guy boom boom Right, got our boot. And again, if you do look at the reference, right, those boots are like pretty big, but I'm just keeping them kind of big. Right, don't want it to go too crazy. And I'm just putting the primary form of these boots here in, right, not going too detailed with any of it, really. All right, again, let's think about exactly what's happening with the, right, with the angle here. Make sure that these boots seem like they could be friends in terms of size. And now let's sort of think about okay, we're we're probably looking down at this box here, something like this. That is, however, super, super rough. But that's just going to give me right, a general, general idea of what that would sort of look like. So again, here you can see mostly what we've got is the, is the primary form kind of working. Again, I keep going like wider, wider. We need to make him right sort of wider, chunkier. Um, but yeah, let's have a go at roughing in the primary forms of the face there. So we'll take this back a little bit and see what the, the face has got there in terms of, uh, sorry, I've moved off that page um, in terms of, yeah, let's see. So it's a, it's a weird sort of mix, right? We've got, right, and we're gonna have center line here, right? We're gonna have a nose here Right, mound with the mouth here. Bump, got the ear like this. And got he's got quite quite the brow. And this is where again good to look at the sort of drawing from few different angles you can see it does sort of tip forward a little bit here so we're sort of looking looking up at it yeah and it sort of gets way way sort of smaller but it's still there back there right so it's kind of like this this is what I'm sort of looking at boom Right, that's what we've got, and he's got this sort of broken nose there. And let's put the face in Sans beard to begin with. Right, got the moustache. the eyebrows again just give him a cartoony little sort of eye um, because uh, just for no reason just for fun <laughs> and uh, yeah we can kind of see here the right the, the beard kind of stops there right so we've got beard Right, beard. And 
and yeah, kind of connects up here. So we've got something like something kind of like that. Again, it's cartoony, sort of my you know little bit sort of in in my style. Um, so taking you know going a little bit further away from the the Capcom look exactly. Right, get these. Right, traps. Like, is he big enough? Right. De I mean, it depends which. Right. Depends on which Street Fighter we're we're talking about. Um, and again, if if you if you're wanting to sort of play around with like you know, how would how would we do that? Um, you know, normally, yeah. What what I do is just take a take a super sort of simple uh, photo of of something like that. That way, we can kind of you know learn exactly what uh you know what what a hand should look like from that angle again we can try and construct it we, we can have a, a go at sort of doing that and doing the the first principle see how we go um which would be sort of what we start which is yeah let's sort of think about okay we're looking at it from the from the bottom we've sort of got essentially a box here right and over here we've got the the thumb pad right so we've sort of got box right and that box sort of tapers down a little bit and you can see here with this right it's hard for me to I can't really twist my arm that way <laughs> right we've got this goes bump down right so if we think about them going this way it goes down and then goes there and then it sort of tucks in there right and then we have the right sort of marks here but again what we need to do is make these sort of bigger and we're going to have a right a series of fingers that are going to right, sort of come in here but again what what we we'll often find is that you know we sort of need to make this bigger and bigger and then we've got right the sort of thumb coming in here so again often the the the, the trick with these um sort of things is is uh, again you know just sort of making sure that we get the right the proportions right and and then there's the issue of like you know is this sort of the right angle um, and then are we overworking it? Are we doing too much? Right, so you can see here, that's a, a much more sort of sensible. Sort of hand posture to choose. We sort of play around with it might be able to get some sort of things that are going to read better but as you can kind of see right you know like not all hands not all hand positions look good right you know so it, it is a, it is not just a matter of like oh you know you sort of drew it correctly it's also a matter of thinking about like okay how how do we um how do we draw a hand from that sort of angle and, and get the shapes right, the shapes to kind of read in an interesting way. And that's where, um, you know, these kind of uh, stranger hand positions can be can be tricky, right? Because, um, again, you can figure them out. But I often find that the most important thing with, with hands is sort of getting, right, sort of getting that sort of gesture right. You know, if we sort of get the gesture right, we get the... the, the, the the feeling right then a lot of it will kind of yeah sort of go away right a lot of it will kind of start to work so again you can kind of see like you know that would be something that's kind of like possible but it's a little bit wobbly in terms of perspective okay for a sketch um but yeah one of the biggest problems you sort of find with uh, overworking hands is that they start to 
draw attention to themselves because they've had the most sort of polish, right? Right. So we go again, something like that. Let's see if we can take this back, just get that looking a little bit more sort of sketchy. You can see the other thing that happens is you've got to always remember to sharpen thy pencil because that will allow us to get again those lines looking a little bit better. So again, let's sort of tweak. All right, let's get. Get some of these costume details, just finish it off quickly. All right, again, we're gonna sort of see his All right, he's gonna have that kind of six pack thing happening. All right, we can push the bottom underneath those pectorals. Again, he's gonna have these coming, we're going to get, again, we can kind of push those shapes there, push the darks, and really just find, right, find the final lines that we're going to, we're going to use and, and sort of push them. Boom, boom. Get, try and keep them a little bit jagged. I have a tendency to make these sorts of things a little bit, a little bit flowy, right? I think if we keep them a little bit more jagged, it'll be good. But yeah, so this one's pretty much, pretty much sorted. Most of those, yeah, we can see what's happening here. What's happening with those with those boots? Something, right? Something like this is happening. Not sure exactly what. But yeah, that gives us, you know, a rough little idea. Uh, again, he still feels a little bit strong man to me. Tapered waist, right? He's just so chunky in these, right? The chest is just so chunky too. But again, hopefully this one gives you an idea for, again, how I would sort of work through some of those kind of issues, you know, like play around with them. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, again, I, I think uh, if we had more time, what I'd probably do is we just do some extra passes on things like hands, uh, feet, uh, get getting some of these boots to be, yeah, just kind of a little bit more dialed in, All right? Get all those little costume details looking good. So yeah, got a little bit more chunk around the heels, etc., etc. We could make this box into something interesting. But uh, yeah, I'll maybe make it just sort of a bit of rank. It could be like a bit of stone or something like that. But yeah, that's uh, that's basically what we would do for that. And uh, yeah, again, just to recap the basic ideas. We need to think about normal proportions and then like, you know, in order to just match whatever property or thing you're, you're trying to draw, you, you kind of need to move a little bit towards that space because there's so many design elements in like Street Fighter, for instance, that really rely on the exaggeration. So, you know, if, if, if I don't draw him really big, then yeah, it's not really going to feel like the character. Um, for me, that's how I view it anyway. So think about the normal, right? How do we exaggerate that? How do we make people look heroic? And then how do we sort of increase that mass, right? Get that sort of superhero look, get the chunkiness, make sure, again, you know, we still keep the head pretty small, etc., etc. Um, let me know what you think in the comments. Did I make him big enough? What, what should we do next time? Um, again, have you sort of tried drawing these kind of chunky characters? Is there something else we could do? Maybe some different sort of poses, etc. What character you'd like to see next for these breakdowns? But uh, yeah, other than that, we will catch you around. Happy drawing.